With how popular and well-received Netflix's The Cuphead Show has become, we wanted to tackle a couple more topics when it comes to the characters in this old-timey world. With a cartoon based on classic rubber hose animation from the 1930s, it's no surprise the show's slapstick would lead to some pretty dumb characters. But we're not complaining because we like all of them. But when it comes down to it, who's got the biggest brain in Cuphead Show? And who deserves to wear the dunce cap? I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and this is the Cuphead Show characters dumb to brilliant. Now, while the show doesn't have much lore, we do want to issue a quick spoiler warning, as we'll be talking about specific episodes and moments, so we highly suggest that you watch the show first. With that said, we're going to be starting off with the dullest knife in our drawer, and working our way up to the most intelligent. These characters are the Dim. At the very bottom of our list is Jasper, one of the ghosts from episode 6. Jasper is mostly a lackey to Duke and Emma, and it's made pretty clear. Jasper is quite dull and doesn't understand basic commands or words at times. Now, this could very well be a result of the saw blades stuck in his head, which we assume is how he died. He's also a punching bag for Duke, and he doesn't even really seem to mind being used as such. Ooh, knock it off. He's the classic cartoon dope known for silly laughter and giving dumb plans. He also seems to have a short attention span and needs to be constantly reminded what they're doing. The riverboat brawler Croaks is up next. Croaks doesn't fall into the same stereotype as Jasper where he's a big dolt. However, Croaks is also not very smart regardless, and between him and Ribby, is obviously the duller of the two. He takes almost everything Ribby says like some sort of challenge for a fight. Anybody says different, I'll pound them. He doesn't realize when he should be calm and needs Ribby for that, and shows very little intelligence outside of possible battle prowess. He does show enough intelligence to use a firefly waiter as an improvised flamethrower at one point which is kind of a smart move in the moment, which is why we decided to rank him above Jasper. Rounding out our first section of dummies is the devil's right-hand man, Henchman. Henchman is a recurring character who appears throughout the series helping the devil in a variety of ways, ranging from giving him need-to-know information such as King Dice's phone call or trying to cheer him up with cake. What's some leftover congratulations, cake? However, he is quite dull and doesn't know how to read a room, such as trying to get King Dice's autograph when the devil is angry at him. He even speaks in the typical cartoon simpleton voice, much like Jasper. However, he doesn't have the weak attention span like Jasper, and actually seems smart enough to run a game show like Roll the Dice. He is quite dumb at times, but we're going to call him the smartest of the dummies. With the dim section out of the way, we now move into a larger category, and that is the average. Starting off this section is Doris from Episode 3. Doris is a small anthropomorphic wiener dog and the wife or girlfriend of Sherman. She doesn't have a lot of screen time, but she shows that she has a decent amount of intelligence. She's shown to be quite the little firebrand as she gets angry at Sherman for always working. She seems to have enough intelligence to know that Cuphead and Mugman escaping would make Sherman angry. She also mispronounces anniversary throughout her appearance and gets quite angry when corrected showing that she's not the type to change her ways with new information. Her husband-slash-boyfriend Sherman is up next. Sherman is a big anthropomorphic bulldog and the chef on Ribby and Croak's riverboat. Sherman is not the typical big dumb brute like Jasper or Henchman, and instead shows a bit of intelligence. Sure, you could say that him threatening to cut up and serve the boys may be seen as dumb, but we see it more as a lack of caring rather than him being dumb. He does correct Doris's pronunciation of anniversary, showing that he is smart enough to do so. You missed our anniversary! Anniversary! Sherman is also shown to be absorbed in his work and seems to be quite good at it, showing that he is smart enough to be the head chef for quite the big audience of people if the size of the riverboat is anything to go by. One outrageous onion, Ollie, is up next. Ollie's a massive onion and a member of the Root Pack. He is the most beat up member of the Root Pack due to his emotions flaring up quite often, leading to him crying and peeling which leads to more crying. Ollie isn't particularly dumb, but he's quite quick to sob and is easily tricked by Cuphead and Mugman, although it is implied he is drunk in that case. 
The smarter of the two frog brothers, Ribby, is up next. Ribby is an ex-boxer and supposed stand-up businessman who runs a riverboat with his brother Croaks. He and his brother both end up sinking their own ship by punching holes in it, which shows they don't really have a whole lot of foresight. I'm part of the show, folks. I'm part of the show. Ribby starts fighting with Croaks at a moment's notice, even after supposedly making up near the end of the episode. Ribby is definitely the brains of the operation, but he's not really the best brains to have, just better than Croaks. To no one's surprise, the main character, Cuphead, is up next. Cuphead is one of the main protagonists on the show, and between him and Mugman, is definitely the duller of the two. This gets to the point that they make jokes out of his bad decisions and dumb moments, such as when he takes off the invisible sweater and loses it, or manages to lose roll the dice when they were making it easy for him to win. He is impulsive to the highest degree, and runs mostly on instinct. He couldn't even come up with the name Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, which Elder Kettle doesn't take lightly. Sprinkle, sprinkle, Mr. Ka? A porky pernicious person, Porkride, pops into our next spot on the list. Porkride is the local merchant who runs the amply named Porkrind's Emporium. He is a greedy pig who will force people to pay more for things they desperately need, and is quite wrathful as well. However, when it comes to his intelligence, there are a few things we'd like to point out. He sent the boys on a dangerous mission because he didn't think they were dumb enough to go to the actual volcano, didn't deduce that the egg-shaped gift he got was an egg, and inadvertently leads to his shop being burnt down because of poor communication. However, he is smart enough to know that the black market is profitable and knows to give the boys the machine they like so they would leave. Mean green and full of beta carotene, up next is Chauncey. Chauncey is a giant carrot and part of the root pack who scam Cuphead and Mugman during episode 7. Now, while he does help in the scam, he doesn't seem to be the leader of the group, where he was implied to be in the original game. But he does show quite some intelligence. Chauncey helps come up with the ideas to scam both the boys and Elder Kettle, as well as sucking up all the water out of spite. Where he really shows his intelligence is he is able to conduct a symphony during the party which shows he understands music quite well, which isn't easy. The final member of the Root Pack on our list is Sal the Potato. Sal is debatably the leader of the Root Pack as he's the one who speaks the most and is the main one that sets up the party and tricks the boys. This party ain't over till the sun comes up. Sal is shown to be a bit of a thug, however, who only cares about his popularity, especially around the Heirloom Sisters. He's smart enough to know that Ollie crying will lead to problems, and he's the one who dreams up the orphan story to get Cuphead and Mugman away. He actually seems to be the smartest of the group, but that could just be because he speaks the most. Flying into our next spot, we have Duke and Emma, the other ghosts from episode 6. We rank the two of them together because they are about the same when it comes to intelligence, as they both fall for the same trick that Cuphead and Mugman play. Duke seems to be the leader, and gets after Jasper quite often, as his intelligence allows him to trick and scare the boys in a variety of ways. Emma plays along and is just as intelligent as Duke, although she seems more like a peacekeeper than anything else. The two of them show that they are able to trick people rather easily, and keep people away from their graveyard in a variety of interesting ways, if the fact that no one mentions or goes through it is anything to go by. Rounding out this section, we have Elder Kettle. Elder Kettle is the caretaker for Cuphead and Mugman, where he is shown to be quite strict because he knows how impulsive Cuphead can be. Rule number two, no fighting! Elder Kettle was in the military in his younger years, and a decorated war hero showing he must have at least some moderate intelligence. However, in his old age, he's lost a lot of his brain power, such as when he greases the stairs to then subsequently trip and fall on them and sets hundreds of traps that he falls into. This is the main reason we can't rank him any higher. His old age has significantly diminished his brain power. With our average intelligence characters out of the way, we now move into the sharp-witted. Starting out this section, we have King Dice. King Dice was the devil's right-hand man and the host of a game show called Roll the Dice. He was smart enough to make relatively easy games as a way to take souls, and do so under the radar with no one knowing or realizing. He kept himself as the most popular game show on Inkwell Isle. His downfall comes from the fact that he's too smart for Cuphead. His games are designed to be easy, so of course, Cuphead finds a way to fail them. However, he does lose his popularity because he's trying too hard to get Cuphead's soul, showing he can be just as impulsive as Cuphead at times. Maybe a bit of a surprise, but up next is Baby Bottle. 
Baby Bottle mostly lands here on the list because of how smart he is compared to other characters his age. Not only is Baby Bottle malicious, but is also actively homicidal, and honestly that takes some smarts. Baby Bottle understands words said by others and will actively disobey them, and when he's called a bad baby, he shifts from malicious to murderous. He knew to cut the chandelier to harm Cuphead and Mugman, and he was well aware that he shouldn't break the radio, and does it regardless. Baby Bottle, when compared to other babies, is a genius, but compared to other characters on the list, we can only rank him here, although he is still much smarter than Cuphead. Our main antagonist, the Devil, is up next. The Devil is an interesting case because he shows intense smarts and intense stupidity at various different points in the series. Getting his worst moments out of the way, he's not the greatest liar, despite being supposedly a trickster, and does manage to trick Cuphead multiple times, although is often outsmarted by Mugman. You don't just get to run away! He also spends most of an episode trying to steal Cuphead's soul, despite knowing that Cuphead was wearing the sweater. But we can't fault his determination. However, he does run a respectably intense, soul-stealing network, and can trick all kinds of people relatively easily. He's high above the rest of the roster because of his bag of tricks, although he is ultimately outsmarted by a few other characters, so we can't rank him any higher. Rounding out our sharp-witted section, we have Mugman. Mugman is the more cautious and, as a result, scared brother of the duo between him and Cuphead. However, this leads to him being seen as much smarter than his brother. He's never taken that sweater off. Not only does he show the ability to use a multitude of unique skills that require a lot of wits, such as knitting with invisible yarn, which can't be easy, he was also able to quickly deduce the problem with the carnival they were at. However, he can't rank any higher simply because he is a child and gets caught up in childish manners at such times. He also wasn't able to tell when a pair of goggles was no longer on his face, which you think would be pretty easy to figure out. But the sharp-witted characters aren't the smartest on our list. Our final category is the geniuses. The first character that we have to label as a genius is Stickler. Stickler is Hell's personal auditor, which can't be an easy job as he has to keep track of and label every single soul that enters and exits Hell. If the customer's served counter in episode 1 is anything to go by, the devil has taken in nearly 7 billion souls at the beginning of the show. He's even forced to do an ungodly long recount, which he obviously hates. However, due to the fact that he is the only confirmed one documenting the souls shows he has to have massive intelligence, hence his placement here. Taking the silver medal for brain power, we have Quadratus. Quadratus is a sage who supposedly knows all there is to know, including how to stop the devil from taking your soul. He's even smart enough to easily rhyme words until it gets old. You stopped rhyming. Eh, it gets old. Which, on a dime, isn't particularly easy. However, he does speak mostly in riddles, as most of these typical sages do, and is also stuck in his pool for unknown reasons. He's definitely the smartest character if we're talking book smarts, but one character beats him due to her propensity for street smarts. That street smart misses, and the smartest character in the show is Miss Chalice. Miss Chalice is the perfect example of a street smart trickster who uses her wits and smarts to get by. She's able to mesmerize people with her charm to get stuff she wouldn't normally get and quite easily trick even the cops or angry bear guards. She's never been caught despite being supposedly a criminal for quite a while, and is even willing to share her secrets with Cuphead and Mugman. This chalice is nothing but trouble. We love trouble! Although they don't quite pick up on it. Sure, she didn't realize she turned on the silent alarm, but we can't really blame her for that. With the fact we'll likely see more of her in the second season, we're very confident in her ranking as the most brilliant character on the show. But let us know in the comment section if you agree with our ranking and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge some of our other Cuphead videos. But most importantly, stay wicked.